For the past nine months, inside the undercover fencing operation, police have purchased items you'd expect from thieves, cars and guns. Oh, that's a three for seven. Now they encounter something they never imagined. It's certainly something we've never seen. Meet 39-year-old Brian Rusty King. His merchandise? Counterfeit $100 bills. Fake money, he says, is a profitable business. Dude, I made so much money on this. What are you looking for? In his pocket, $2,000 worth of the fakes. Well, what do you have on you right now? A couple grand. I got 2000 on you. He hands the bogus bills to the undercover cops. Where does he get the counterfeits? He says from some really scary guys. I mean, they, don't, they don't around. They're real serious people. There's no joking around, laughing like we are. I mean, they're just real quiet. The undercover cops carefully examine the counterfeit bills and offer to pay Rusty 25 cents on the dollar. He takes the $500 in real currency for the $2,000 in counterfeits. How does he keep his bills straight? That's why I carry two wallets on it. <laughs> yeah, one, the, the real money. <laughs> Rusty says passing counterfeit money has not been difficult. He says he simply spends real money in a store, gets change from the clerk, then quickly finds an excuse to introduce a fake bill. And I turn around like I'm going to walk away and I'm going to go, oh yeah, yeah give me a pack of cigarettes or something oh, and I'll throw it down. And yeah. yeah. They're they're buying, buying. They just gave them to you. Right. So they don't think to sit there and look at it. And, <laughs> gotcha. and I haven't had one problem yet. See the thing? He claims some of the money is also passed into circulation by an insider at a casino. He says takes his fake bills and gives him real currency. We got one, we got one guy in a cashier's cage in a casino. We got like six different people who walk in. And they'll take like five hundred dollars a piece, and they go to the cashier's cage. They give him the money, and he takes it. But the way he inserts it in, turns it in, I guess somehow he's mixing it up. And they've been funneling money to the casino for almost a year now. Rusty says the counterfeiters have been trying to refine the process in an effort to improve the product. In fact, he says they're holding back some recently printed bills to make sure they're just perfect. I mean, we're waiting now just to see. Hold the bill for a couple of days and see if anything anything funny happens, like you know, changes colors or right. anything weird. The cops want to know more about how these bills are made, a lot more. So a few weeks later, Rusty is back. Now Rusty tells them he's on his own. There aren't any partners. And this time, in a garage behind the storefront, for $1,500, he will give them a demonstration in the fine art of counterfeiting. We're watching from the back room. Rusty has no idea that he's talking to an undercover police officer. First, he takes real $5 bills and sets out to remove all of their ink. Apparently, making counterfeit money isn't as high-tech as one would imagine. He soaks them in a degreaser bought at an automotive store and heats them up for a minute or so in a microwave oven. What's a good amount of time to leave them in there, especially if you have one? What and a half minute. To leave it in there. I mean, and then you no longer than, than 10 minutes in there at all. Okay. He teaches them how to brush the bills clean. Rusty is showing the undercover officers how to clean the bills, actually taking the ink right off. He finishes washing the bill in a bowl of water and sprays it with a household cleaner. What is that doing with the bill? Just cleaning that crap off of it. Okay. This is giving new meaning to the phrase laundering money. And then he uses a hair dryer to finish the drying process. When he's done, what used to be a $5 bill is virtually blank. Here we go, here we go. Except for the watermark of Abraham Lincoln. What is that called? That's Abraham. To make the fake hundred, he'll use an inkjet printer. So inkjet printer never a laser printer. Right, inkjet. He scans a photo of a real $100 bill. Yeah, you want to make sure the bill is centered. The machine is scanning this every time, and that's what it's put on top of here. And prints it on top of the blank paper he just created from that $5 bill. Dude, I think you just solved our problem. The job is finished. The result, a counterfeit $100 bill. What's the quality? The police say as counterfeits go, it's fairly good. So if somebody were to take the time and actually hold this up to a light, you could actually see Abraham Lincoln and the $5 strip here. Correct. But correct. most people don't do that. Right. Most people just look to see that there's some sort of portrait, which is a reflection, and they look to see that there's some sort of strip here. But for his part, Rusty's proud of his work. 
Unless you were an expert money, how the f*** would you tell if it was fake or real? Right. In case you're thinking of trying this at home, you should know we've left out a number of key steps. And one more thing, counterfeiting is a felony, punishable by up to 15 years in prison. When the demonstration is done, the undercover detectives tell Rusty they'll be in touch. All right, man. Take care. That may be an understatement. We got him in custody. I'm just going to go down the street so 